According to a study conducted in 2009 by Japanese researchers, human bioluminescence exists is just too dim for our eyes to see. This was discovered using super sensitive cameras. It wasn't infrared despite how the pictures appear. In today's video, I will be looking at some research which suggests natural bioluminescence is present in human beings. This is a short video aiming to simply put this fact forward as a natural phenomenon dealing with metabolism and natural rhythms. However, this fact will tie into theories I will be approaching next dealing with electromagnetic fields, the idea that everything is made of quote unquote light, creation of matter out of nothing and big elephant in the room, the theme of light so obviously present in reports from near-death experiences, UFO-related phenomenon and beyond, this idea that we are somehow connected and made of light and as usual in this outline in this channel, I will be providing the facts, the data, the articles and the research for you to form your own criteria on what some are calling quote-unquote new age ideas. Before I move forward, I would like to remind you that if you want to join the growing discussion on consciousness and would like to be notified on the latest scientific discoveries and theories surrounding this topic and how they connect to ancient mythologies and philosophies, please like the video, subscribe to the channel as I'll try to upload at least one video per week as I continue with the outline. Alright, so into this video, I'm gonna be going into this article. You can't see it, but humans actually glow with our own form of bioluminescence. Now, this, um, this, this article was written on 2016. I'm taking it from Science Alert, as I said. I'm using these quote unquote sciencey blogs, these science news blogs, because they, they, they have a little bit of creativity in the writing and they always contain a published research. This video is going to be going on the playlist ongoing research in this channel where every single video is going to have some form of published uh, research attached to it. So I'm going to be linking this one. Uh, interestingly, in, interestingly enough, this is 2009, only 160,000 views. And the whole thing is right here. You can go into the method, into what they use, so on and so forth. And um, what I find interesting is that this is just like a random fact, right? right? This is just, um, oh, it's kind of neat to know that humans have some form of bioluminescence. But uh, why am I even talking about this in the first place? Of course, is the elephant in the room. It's, it's straightforward. And now that we have this bulk of research on, on theories and some ideas coming from near-death experiences and some other altered states of consciousness, I said we have to start making this merging between the science and the bulk of data from near-death experiences. So in all these altered states of consciousness, the theme of light is prevalent. Whether we're talking about psychedelics, whether we're talking especially in near-death experiences uh, or uh, UFO phenomenon, etc., this is always the theme of light. Um, coming, coming more into, into near-death experiences, going with the main thing that is the light that most people see and that is the ultimate thing in the universe according to them. But this repeats in psychedelics, people experience something similar sometimes and uh, in UFO as I... UFO cases of abduction or even sightings, etc. However, there's also some scientific theories which suggest, and I'm going to be going into them in the future, uh, that literally everything is made of light. And there's some very interesting research that is even blowing my own mind. So I'm going to go into all of these in the future. But I thought this article here and this research is a good introduction to realize that we're not talking about woo. And as I, there was another article, I might go into it or not, that, where they were saying what the quote unquote new age people are saying might not be so far-fetched. So um, it's kind of, I'll let you decide what this means to you. I'm going to go, I'm going to provide you the data, the research, uh, the implications, and uh, we'll move from the all right, when you hear about bioluminescence, your mind probably jumps to deep sea creatures like the anglerfish, which uses millions of bacteria to make a light appear in front of its head and catch prey and illuminate your nightmares. 
or what about humans? So now they're talking about um, this uh, bioluminescence, and I'm not sure if the if the if the, if the article actually goes into it uh, further down. Uh, but they talk about fluorescence, the difference between bioluminescence and fluorescence. One is bioluminescence is this created it's an internal creation of light, is an emanation of light, and the other one, fluorescence, is the reflection or absorption of light from different sources. So now um, there's there's also this research I might go into it or not, where they say that most living forms, animals, and so on and so forth, have some form of fluorescence or bioluminescence. So this is a normal thing in nature. This is not something to be, like, incredibly amazed by or anything like that. But now, as I said, when we start applying the correlations and the implications, then it's when things get really interesting. So this is just a regular thing that happens in nature. But now, it's never been proved that humans have this ability of bioluminescence. So, according to a study conducted in 2009, uh, as I said, it's linked, it's linked right here. You can find it uh, below in the description of this video. Im imaging of ultra-weak spontaneous photon emission from human body displaying diurnal rhythm. They tied with met metabolism and so on and so forth. Uh, by Japanese re researchers, human bioluminescence is visible, invisible light exists. It's just too dim for our weak eyes to peek upon. The human body literally glimmers. The team from the Tohoku Institute of Technology wrote in their study published in PLOS1, it's the same research right here, uh, the intensity of the light emitted by the body is 1000 times lower than the sensitivity of our naked eye. So this, these two things, the study for our eyes, is the sensitivity of our naked eyes, this keeps repeating. Um, the fact that we cannot see this, does it mean that it doesn't exist? So it ties into the whole idea and into the whole problem of materialism. So anything that we cannot see with our own eyes, it must not exist. So if you would ask before, before we have all this technology and all this research, and if you would tell someone that there are all these uh, quantity and uh, all these quarks that create all matter, they would say no. This, this is a stupid idea because I cannot see it with my eyes. Now, when we start talking about these different dimensions, these different frames of existence or reality and so on and so forth, we have to understand that there are a lot of things that exist which we cannot see with our own eyes. Now, we know that there is an electromagnetic field. We know that there is a gravitational field. We cannot see it. Does it mean it doesn't exist? It does. Science has proved this. And now, in the previous, uh, my previous video, I talked about Sheldrake's morphic resonance. It's a whole theme about starting to understand this field, starting to understand all these um, things that might be real and might have a real interaction with our physical material world, but we do not see them. I'm going to link that uh, research somewhere in the screen. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good way to start understanding uh, this idea of quote unquote fields. And I'm going to be all of this, uh, the whole thing about light. This is a short article. I'm just going to be going quickly through it. But um, the whole thing ties with further ideas and further theories tying with electromagnetism, electromagnetic fields, and then we're going to make the full circle. As I said, I was talking about quantum physics and quantum uh, pseudo-telepathy and so on and so forth. We're going to make a, whole, a full circle on how all of this and the fact that we might be made of light or influenced by light or everything might be made of light, uh, goes back into the research on quantum, on some research I'm going to be approaching in the future, which uh, suggests, uh, um, it doesn't suggest, scientists actually created matter out of nothing, out of quote-unquote energy, and uh, ties to the theory that everything is made alive, but I'll be going into that in the future, so... Alright, so the article goes into a bit of the details of how they did this. They used super sensitive cam cameras to monitor five healthy male in volunteers 20 minutes every three hours. Uh, they found that participants glowed throughout the day with the brightest spots appearing around the forehead, neck, cheeks in the late afternoon. Uh, the demon's bioluminescence was recorded late at night. So this has to do with rhythms, it has to do with uh, metabolism and so on and so forth. As I said, this is, this is a natural thing, but uh, it's important to understand it's a real thing. 
uh, this um, this wasn't infrared radiation caused by heat. So a lot of people would say, oh, it's just the heat escaping the body, and this is why they say, well, no, it's not that. Despite how the images might appear, those signals are actually from photons of visible light. Light particles not caused by heat. Now, I don't want to go into the whole thing, but light is the whole thing that started the, um, the quantum, um, quantum revolution and the, all those experiments in the 1900s. So I know most people that follow my channel and uh, they have been going through the research with me know about this and they know about quantum physics and they know about the double slit experiment know all, all about this but if somebody comes to my video and have no idea what quantum physics is or what's going on with double slit experiment and how it's important that we're actually looking at photons on our bodies these photons, which um, people don't know if they were solid, if they were energy, if, they're if they were waves or particles. So this is why they put the parentheses here, light particles, because light can be wave and light can be particles, depending on when we look at it and how we look at it. Uh, it's our consciousness collapsing this wave form uh, function into particles. Now, here is, uh, here is the key of the whole thing. When we go into electromagnetism, so uh, the scientific community is divided. Uh, before I move forward, the thing that I wanted to say before is um, I'm going to link uh, uh, that video, an in-depth uh, look at the double slit experiment for someone who doesn't know about quantum physics or why this whole thing is important. I made a video about this. I'm going to link it somewhere on the screen or you can find it below. But this is the whole... Thing about the issue so it's the scientific community is divided some people are saying yeah everything is made of light because they find that at the core it's just energy so what exactly is energy energy can be transferred into matter and they say oh well yeah but matter is made of neutrons and protons and so different things different materials which create the basic components of life but at the core it's all energy and what energy is at the most basic level i'm gonna be going into it in the future it has to do with electromagnetism everything is electricity we're made of electricity quote unquote aka electromagnetism aka light and now this would be a very neat idea but as i said we start start to start tying the whole ideas from alter states of consciousness which i've been thinking about delving in, into in this channel i'm not really sure but i'm gonna do a catalog of some sorts all right, so we can see the images here, more or less what they did. You can see here the, the photons going here, the graph, zero photons, the blue, but everything is right here on the face. It has to do with metabolism and so on and so forth. As this, this is uh, very well explained right here in the actual research, if anybody wants to actually go through the research. So what's going on here? Well, it's actually a pretty interesting side effect of our metabolisms. As Elliot Bentley sums up for The Guardian, as, uh, this, um, this, this, this same thing was in a bunch of articles. I picked this one because it's, uh, it was the easiest to read. Uh, human bioluminescence is the result of highly reactive free radicals produced through cell respiration, interacting with free floating lipids and proteins. So, as I said, this is a thing of nature, this is a natural phenomenon. There's nothing um, amazing about it. It's not like we're glowing light when we are enlightened or when we are like doing something special or something like that. Now, if we go into some of the research on healing and how people focus their energy and their different tools and how to do this uh things start to get a little bit interesting i've done some videos about this uh, it seems that a lot of people are not interested uh, about all these things uh but i might make some private videos on this however i did i did have that one research from dean radin um and tying into the ideas of bill bankston that we're not talking about energy it's not like these people who do these healings focus their energy perhaps this is a tool for them to look at things but what's happening is more hard for me to put into words but i would say more like tapping into this quote-unquote metaphysical run that i've been speaking of and making changes rather than one putting the hands over someone and applying energy. Now, the applying, laying on hands might be a good tool for you to access that metaphysical frame of, of reality, but it's just a tool, just like ritualism, just like when people would just grab some beats and go Krishna, Krishna, Adi, Adi, Krishna, Adi, Krishna. It's ritualism, it's rocking back and forward. The same thing with the 
uh, people with the rosaries and the chanting and so on and so forth is getting into a frame of reference and uh, acting on what seems to be some metaphysical form of existence. Now, this is a little bit of the woo, a little bit of the new age, a little bit of the some of the other research that I, I was going into. I'm going to link it somewhere on the screen that, that this research is not woo. This is actual research uh, with being raiding, just going into rooms with the healings were um, applied and seeing if there were some changes in in the fields around the room so it ties into the whole thing so i'm thinking on the screen somewhere below but uh, basically this is just a natural thing that happens through metabolism now it's an, it's kind of an interesting fact in as i said but it ties into further things yeah, these excited molecules can then interact with fluorophores, uh, which can emit a photon and a photon, and boom, you're actually a glowing. Uh, the team thinks the participants had glowed the most because the Spartan body generally sees more sunlight, affecting the melanin inside the skin and triggering the illuminating reaction better than other areas. As I said, there's something, some form of reflection, some form of absorption, all things could be happening at the same time. Further backing of the hypothesis that animal bioluminescence is attached to met metabolic rates, the researchers suggest that the glow could be linked to the body's biological clock. So in the late afternoon, we're burning the most energy, we glow the brightest. As I said, all of this is tied to metabolism and natural things that happen in the body. Uh, researchers hope to that in the future we're going to be able to check light levels. Uh, so the next time somebody tells you you're glowing, you'll know they're speaking the truth. So I found some other uh, articles where there's more research on this and it goes further, but this is a good introduction to just understand that this generation of photons is a real thing that happens in our bodies. Yes, it's just tied to metabolism and the natural aspects of our body, our natural rhythms and so on and so forth. Uh, just like in the, in, the, in the case of animals, they use it to attract prey or to mate. There are different, different reasons why this bioluminescence exists, but bioluminescence is a real thing. There's literally light. So as I said, all of this ties into the further theories that everything is made of light. Uh, everything in the universe is made of light. It ties into some of the other theories on electromagnetism. Uh, and as I said, if anybody is new with um, altered states of consciousness and especially near death experiences, just go read 10 near death experiences right now. Go into any forum, go into YouTube, type near death experiences, and see what people are saying uh, when they go to the other side. Uh, as, a, as a matter of fact, I've been linking this research that I've been that was um, published this year, this, this, this statement, this uh, scientific consensus statement for the future research of near death experiences were according to the researchers, different experts in the field or from the medical um, fields, are saying that the reports are in the hundreds of millions of reports saying the same thing. So as I said, go look at 10, go look at this. I'm going to link it somewhere on the screen. As I said, this is a shorter video where I just want to... And I'm going to go back into this where whenever I talk about electromagnetism, uh, when I talk about how uh, scientists created matter out of nothing, because as Einstein said, energy equals matter, and you're proving it. Um, I'm going to go back into this and just prove that there's actual bioluminescence in humans as a natural thing. Now, as I, as I said, when you start tying all of these on with also some of the ancient philosophies, you can find the theme of light is present in most of our ancient philosophies. If we look at Christianity, there's an event called the Transfiguration of Jesus Christ, where supposedly this, um, this figure of Jesus what literally became light. His face was glowing with a light, which uh, now that we have some research, I don't know, maybe the metabolism of this individual was acting up or something like that. But now he had two visitors who they attributed these two visitors as some, um, some, uh, some, some influential characters in, in the scriptures and so on and so forth. But he simply had two other individuals with him. 
So we start tying into the con the ideas of contact and when people talk about these UFO abductions, these UFO reports, what do we see? We see lights in the sky. When they talk about the abductions and when they meet these entities, they talk about light beings, whether in near their experiences, whether in psychedelics, whether in the UFO abduction, they talk about these entities, these beings made of light which communicate with them. As I said, I'm gonna start introducing a little bit more of the alter states of conscious that i'm not really sure how i'm gonna do it in the channel um what i've been doing is some catalog of some of these alter states of consciousness tying the most important things and the things that repeat and uh, what i want to do is to tie them with the actual research and so now that i'm going to be going into this bioluminescence thing and these beings of light uh, you can see a straight correlation right there i'm going to be doing some other correlations as i said i'm not really sure how i'm going to do this uh, I'm going to start doing this because um, in the previous video, uh, there was this this quote, this, um, this paragraph where the author goes to say that science is missing this holistic and meaningful cosmology that some of the philosophies and some of the, the other um, ideas can provide. But now these are not just philosophies and are, these are not just ideas. This is research on altered states of consciousness and bulk of data. Yes, this is anecdotal data. We cannot prove anything with an anecdotal data. But at one point, at what point does this anecdotal data is to be taken seriously? Is it hundreds of millions of reports? We have them. And as I said, I linked it. The, re the scientific consensus statement is out there now. If we go into psychedelics and if we start going into UFO reports, at what point were all of these tied together? Are we going to be taking them seriously? And now, uh, at the degree where we put the scientific framework with these reports, we're going to get closer or approach some sort of a truth because the truth might be so much more complex that we can understand uh, right now but we can get closer to a truth and create as i've been saying a basic outline to the truth about our reality who we are as human beings what we're doing here If you're on the path of finding the truth about reality and our purpose as humans on earth the information that i have to share concerns you after a lifetime of research in philosophies ranging from Buddhism to the occult, I've encountered themes and patterns along some baffling information that is beginning to be seriously studied by science. A rational divine outline, The Ghost of Jesus, is the first iteration of this project, where I analyze the message of Jesus without dogmatism, fanaticism, or religious bias. You can find my work available on Amazon on the link below. If you find this work valuable, consider subscribing, sharing, and following me on social media as it will help others in the same path to find this information. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.